Okay, so we are on 7.6, a hierarchy of quadrilaterals. You'll see our objective today is to be able to classify quadrilaterals in a hierarchy based on properties. So you see some quadrilaterals here below. Let's start off with our math, mental math. I want you to take a look. Um, well, it looks like the answer is already given to you. Or we can check our answers here. Um, so it says to use an estimate to place the decimal point in each product and record the product on your slates. So on your slate or on a piece of paper. What you'll see here is they've got 2.8 times 6.1. 5.7 times 9.4, 15.8 times 19.5, and then 112.5 times 6.6. .6. You'll see that they have uh, some digits off to the right, and then there are some um, answers even further over to the right. What I'd like you to do is to pause the video and then check to see is the correct answer 17.8, is the correct answer 53.58, 308.10 and 742.5. Use your estimation and come back and check and we'll we'll go through how to do that. So pause and come back. So when I look at this, I'm going to see 3 times 6 and I know that that's 18. And so this does check out. We're going to see 5.7 is can be rounded to six. So six times nine would be 54. And again, 53.58 checks out because we're at 53. And if we had it anywhere else, it would be too far away with place value. 15.8 would round to 16. This could round to 20. And we know 16 times two is 32 add that zero so 320 so putting your decimal right here to get 308 and 10 hundredths checks out again and i bet anything this last one's going to check out what do you think 112.5 i'm gonna round that to 100 just for uh this times seven that gives us 700 and what do you know 742 checks out with our estimation. Hopefully you found that they were all correct as well. Let's clear our screen. I don't know if you've noticed, but they've updated my screen recording. So our math message today, is to use your quadrilateral cards to complete the top of journal page 250 with a partner. So if you're home at home, obviously you don't have a partner from school, but you could work with someone in the class by communicating um, through Gmail, or you could work with a family member at home. You will not have these cards at home. So you do have this image right here. Um, you can see that you'll, you can go back. We can, um, you can look in your journal for images of these. I will also create a screenshot of this so that if you want to print it and refer to it. So you see you have shapes with letters on them. We've got A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, and P. You'll notice some of them have right angles represented right there. Some of them have acute. Some of them have obtuse angles. Move that. Some of them have quad, uh, congruent sides. Some of them have sides that just don't match up in, so in length or angles. So our math message here says, again, to work with the partner, carefully read through the definitions below, then find one quadrilateral card that shows an example of each type of quadrilateral. Write the letter of your example next to the definition. So we see that we have trapezoid is a quadrilateral that has at least one pair of parallel sides. A kite is a quadrilateral with two separate pairs of adjacent equal length sides. A parallelogram is a trapezoid with two pairs of parallel sides. A rhombus is a parallelogram with all four sides equal in length. You might think of that as a square. A rectangle is a parallelogram with four right angles, and a square is a rectangle with all four sides equal in length. Now, what I want you to notice is I said a rhombus could, we could be a square, but notice that a square fits into the rhombus category by saying it's got four sides equal in length, but not all rhombuses are squares because this one has four right angles. So that's what we're going to get into today. Um, if you're at home, what I would suggest is looking up some of these shapes uh, using 
the Google search, type in trapezoid, type in quadrilateral, type in kite. Remember, I do have it on this slide right here. We've got them all for you. So for example, C would be a rectangle. K, that's actually a kite. And I know that that's not the typical kite that we think of, but it fits the definition, a quadrilateral with two separate pairs of adjacent equal length sides. So you'll see this side and this side is um, congruent. And you can see they're represented with the lines. Notice that this is a rectangle. Notice this is a square. This A is a rhombus. Because notice it's got four sides that are the same length, but it doesn't have right angles, so it doesn't fit into the square category. Kind of looks like the square has been shifted to the right. So taking a look at P, is that a trapezoid? Is L a kite? Why or why not? I want you to think through that, looking at the definition here that you have on your math message in your book and ask yourself, why is that? Or why is it not a trapezoid? Why is it or why is it not a kite? Explain that to yourself. So as we're moving on, our big, our big goal is the hierarchy. And so you can look here, this is a connection from 7.5 triangle hierarchy. And you can see that we had triangles, then we had isosceles triangles, and then equilateral triangles. And when you're thinking about the hierarchy, these are all triangles. Isosceles fits into the category of triangle, but it doesn't fit into the category equilateral, where equilateral triangles are also isosceles and they're also triangles. Remember, some, but not all items in the general category can be moved lower. Some of them can only be specified as triangles, if depending on what your subcategories are. So you want to pay attention to that. You probably get into the habit of wanting to put everything into a subcategory. But as you saw with the triangles, look how many we have that just fit in triangle. So on page 251, we're going to move towards the quadrilateral hierarchy. And you will see here that we have the, we have the category of quadrilaterals, obviously. And then underneath that, we have several subcategories. We have trapezoids, kites, parallelograms, rectangles, rhombuses, and finally squares. So what do you notice about this hierarchy? How does it compare to the hierarchies that we've looked at in the previous lesson? I hope that you're noticing that we have these blue arrows that go from quadrilateral. So we can see that we've got two subcategories, trapezoids and kites. So, so, cat, so quadrilaterals can be put into two categories. Is it a trapezoid or is it a kite? If we put it into the trapezoid category over here, we're going to see that then we can decide, okay, maybe it's a trapezoid. Does it fit then into the parallelogram side? Does it have sides that are parallel? If it can fit into the parallelogram side, then you can look further and you say, all right, is it a rectangle or can it fit into the rhombus? If it can, then you move it. And if it can fit into those, can it fit into the square? And what you'll notice here that a square is a rectangle. It's also a rhombus. Therefore, it's also a parallelogram and it's also a trapezoid but you'll notice that a square is also a rhombus, meaning it's also a kite. So the square can fit into every single category. So on Math Journal page 251, if you've got those cards and you've printed them out or you're looking at them on the slides, are all of the figures quadrilaterals? How can you tell? What is that very first property that you can use to test whether a figure is a quadrilateral? Think about what the word quadrilateral means, meaning four sides. Then when you find all the quadrilaterals, are all of them trapezoids? Is a quadrilateral always a trapezoid? How do you know? What property can you use to test whether a quadrilateral is a trapezoid or not? Are the, all the quadrilaterals in your cards kites? Is quadrilateral A a kite? How do you know? What property can you use to test whether a quadrilateral is a kite? So let's look back at those cards here. So we're looking at A. We want to know, is it a trapezoid 
And is it a kite? So if we take a look, a trapezoid is a quadrilateral that has at least one pair of parallel sides. Does it? Looks like it. And a kite is a quadrilateral with two separate pairs of adjacent equal length sides. Does it have it? It looks like it. So it's fitting into the category of trapezoid and kite. And if it's fitting into the category of trapezoid and kite, it's going under both of these. It's most likely going to be a rhombus. And let's look back at what a rhombus is. It's a parallelogram with all four sides equal in length. And A definitely is a parallelogram with all four sides equal in length. So I want you to go ahead and pause for a second. I just showed you some of those. And try to categorize those cards. Pause your video, work on it, and come back and we'll look at it. All right. So shapes are sample answers, but here are some samples that we've got for you. Remember that the quadrilateral has four sides and four angles. Shape E gives us just that. Trapezoids have at least one pair of parallel sides. Shape D is an example of a trapezoid. I'm going to continue moving down on the left side, moving down to the parallelogram. In order for it to be a parallelogram, it needs to have two pairs of parallel sides. Shape G gives us just that. Move further down into our hierarchy, deeper subcategories, rectangles have everything above it. They have at least one pair of parallel sides. They have two pairs of parallel sides. They have four right angles, giving us an example of shape P. And then moving down to square, which has four right angles, two pairs of parallel sides, and it has four right angles. That gives us shape N. So that takes care of that whole side. Those are examples. You will probably have more. Now, if we move down on the kite side, remember a kite has two pairs of equal length adjacent sides. B is an example. And then it also, we move down to rhombus, the one that we talked about a minute ago, A. A is a rhombus. It has four equal length sides and it has two pairs of parallel sides. It also has two pair of adjacent sides. So that fits into the rhombus category. So on page 250, there are some questions, and I'd like you to read through these. I've got the, the answers here. These are sample answers. I want you to go through page 250 and just reflect on the shapes. And then on page 249, you'll see here some area problems. This is good for some extra practice outside of shapes. Um... And again, I've got the answers here, but I would like you to take some time, work through these on your own, just for some extra practice. Notice we went backwards. So my main goal today, though, was talking about that hierarchy. And I want you to really focus in on this slide here, page 251, noticing what the properties are and how they fit. The square is a rhombus, which is a kite, which is a quadrilateral. Kites, not all kites are rhombus though. This one right here, B, is not a rhombus. There's a lot of fitting into categories. Square is a rectangle. It's also a parallelogram. It's also a trapezoid. But notice that the trapezoid is not always a square. The lower you go down in this hierarchy, it fits into more subcategories. There will be more extension activities for you to work on with this to get a stronger grip, but that is our lesson for today.